Martha Graham, born in 1894, left a great impact on the modern dance world as well as the progression of dance history on a wide scale. Graham started with a small group of dancers who later danced in her Martha Graham company. During Graham's life, the National Association of Dance was becoming a prominent entity in changing the development and understanding of dance. The association adopted Martha Graham's own term of a professional studio school where they believed people could go to take classes certified with professional standards. Before she created her own company, Martha Graham was one of Ted Shawn's protégés and danced at the Denishon School. Graham's style can be described as emotionally charged and theatrical within the bounds of modern style. One of her signature movements was the contraction. Martha Graham was sought out by many to perform all around the world. Adolf Hitler even asked Graham to perform at the International Arts Festival in Berlin during the time of the Olympics, though she turned down his invitation. Another great choreographer, known to us as the father of jazz dance, is Jack Cole, born in 1911. He was well known for his theatrical and film choreography. He choreographed for shows such as Kismet and Man of La Mancha. He worked extensively with Marilyn Monroe in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and numerous other projects. He was Monroe's confidant. Cole molded Monroe to be the dancer he wanted her to be. He choreographed every single movement she had, including her lip pursings, while she was singing. Cole's earliest training was Cicchetti. Jack Cole, like many other dance greats, later trained at the Denishon School. It is here where he received some of his training in Eastern Indian dance. He later went to dance for Doris Humphrey and Charles Weedman, who also went to the Denishon School. Jack Cole's style can be characterized by facial movements, gestures, emphasized isolations, placements, quick directional changes, and long knee slides. Jack Cole was a known terror in the studio. He once dragged a girl across the floor by her hair, all while threatening to throw another student out of a second-story window. Agnes DeMille was also a very prominent figure in dance history. She established a name for herself in ballet, theater, and movie musicals. Born in New York City in 1905, DeMille was born into a family full of talent. Both her father and grandfather were established playwrights, while her mother was an economist. After graduating from UCLA at the age of 19, DeMille had begun her career as a dancer. She started out creating dances for herself and putting on recitals. While her recitals were quite critically acclaimed, she was making no money from them. Eventually, she moved to London with her mother, where she continued putting on recitals and continued making no money. She began studying at Ramparts Ballet Club, where she began learning about creative theater. Agnes made regular trips back to the United States, and during one of these trips, she choreographed dances for the film Romeo and Juliet. This project brought DeMille great attention. In 1938, DeMille once again returned to the United States and toured the country with Joseph Anthony and Seibel Shearer, and in 1940, American Ballet Theater was formed, with DeMille being a founding member. With the company, DeMille had put on a production of her ballet, Black Ritual, which uses all black dancers. However, the ballet was not well liked by the critics. Three Virgins and a Devil was performed the following year and had a tremendous hit. In 1942, she created a ballet entitled Rodeo for the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo Company. This ballet was a world famous hit. It was because of this ballet that she was selected to choreograph Oklahoma, which was another sensational hit. Shortly after Oklahoma, she did choreography for Touch of Venus, Bloomer Girl, and Carousel. In 1953, Oklahoma was filmed and became the first movie to cost over a million dollars. Surprisingly, DeMille had stated that she doesn't think the film version was nearly as good as the stage version. In 1974, she established her own dance company, the Agnes DeMille Heritage Dance Theater at the North Carolina School of the Arts in Winston-Salem. The company successfully toured several times, however it was cut short when DeMille suffered a cerebral hemorrhage on May 15, 1975, just before going on stage for one of her famous lectures entitled Conversations About Dance. The hemorrhage did not kill her, in fact, it hardly slowed her down. She wrote five books after her hemorrhage, composed five dance works, continued working on revivals of her original choreography from Broadway musicals, and continued with speaking engagements. Agnes DeMille was given several awards, including the New York City's Handel Medallion, the Kennedy Center Honor by President Carter, 17 honorary degrees, two Tony Awards, and one Emmy Award. Agnes Mill died in October 1993 at the age of 88. Lester Horton was an American treasure when it came to the progression of modern dance. His choreography was progressive, his dances were unheard of, and his teachings were unmatched. 
There is no question that Lester Horton had a huge impact on those around him. Horton was born in Indianapolis, Indiana in 1906. He was an all-American boy who had a distinct interest in Native Americans. He would study the Native American exhibits in his local children's museum. His interest in dance began when he was around 16 years old and he trained with Theo Hughes, a local ballet teacher, for nearly two years. After his short time as a student, Lester Horton began teaching at Hughes' studio. It wasn't until 1925, when he auditioned for a touring company, that he began his journey to becoming a dance engineer. He toured with Forrest Thurnberg for many months and learned many things about production and costume design. Something important to look at when studying Lester Horton's career is his first solo concert in 1931, entitled Kutani War Dance. One can again see his Native American influence. It was after this breakthrough solo concert that he began to develop the Lester Horton technique. Using a group of local high school students, he began to perfect his training methods. He was even invited to participate in a dance production during the Olympic Games with his high school students. Another important production of Horton's was his first full evening of showcases of his own work. This occurred at the Shrine Auditorium in 1934 and was very significant to his career. This performance made way for Horton's company to give concerts throughout the area. Horton had six movement categories, each category containing different studies. The studies were projections, locomotions, preludes, rhythms, improvisations, and fortifications. Projections consisted of things such as leg slices and hip pushes. These deal with the specific qualities of movement. Locomotions are steps that travel, such as leaping, jumping, running, and gliding. Accented runs and arch springs are examples of this. Preludes are designed to quickly stimulate in tone. They are short phrases of movements. Rhythms are dance patterns that involve music and rhythmic consequences. Improvisations awaken one's own movement quality and help one explore themselves. The fortifications were long combinations used to focus on a specific area of the body or stretch and to establish a framework of movement mechanics, muscular development, coordination, range, rhythm, and movement quality. There were 17 fortifications. Horton once said that he didn't want to create Horton dancers with his technique. He simply wanted to create possibilities of movement within the body. The Horton technique is very anatomically based and is named quite literally. Some examples include roll downs to warm up the spine, flat backs to straighten and support the upper back, lateral stretches, release swings, parallel leg swings, and deep lunges. All of these techniques are exactly how they sound. So, so what do these choreographers all have in common? Well, Martha Graham and Jack Cole both went to the Denishon School for part of their early dance training. They are connected through Ruth Dennis and Ted Sean. Agnes DeMille and Lester Horton are connected through a man named James Mitchell. James Mitchell was a Lester Horton dancer. In a failed attempt to create a dance company in New York City, Mitchell found himself in an audition for Oklahoma, which Agnes DeMille happened to be choreographing. He ended up working for DeMille as a principal dancer and assistant choreographer, and worked with her later on as well. Lester Horton and Martha Graham are connected through the Denishon School. Martha Graham was in the company during the time period that Horton was greatly inspired and influenced by the Denishon School and their modern work. Agnes DeMille and Jack Cole are connected by the mere fact that she claims to have stolen from Jack Cole and was greatly influenced by his jazz style. <laughs>